whoever just joined our session, this is Federica, I'm part of the DocCity team, and it's my pleasure to welcome you all to this live webinar of Copenhagen Business School. Today we will be talking about the Copenhagen MBA, um, starting by talking to you a little bit about the journey and then later on we'll be focusing on the applying and interviewing and actually landing on a job. Uh, we have with our speaker, Lizanne and Magdalena, that are ready to um, start with their, their presentation, but then will be also available to answer all of your questions uh, that we invite you to write into the Q&A section. So I just now leave the floor to, to them for the presentation, and we really look forward to receiving all of your questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, Federica, and also welcome from our side to everybody. I am Magdalena and I am currently the admissions manager for the full-time MBA and it's great to see actually some familiar names. So he hello everybody who I already talked to. Um, and I have with me my very good friend and yes, MBA classmate. And, and, and a very good timing, Judith from South Africa. I am also from South Africa. So um, very happy to be here today. I'm at the moment the finance and strategy partner at Zero North, um, which is a company that is owned by Ms. Tankers. So looking forward to all your very inquisitive questions later. And before we get there, um, I would like to tell you or let you know what we actually gonna do um, or what we go, go through in this webinar. So we're gonna start with um, a short introduction to the Copenhagen MBA, which you might know um, some of you already. Um, I will talk a little bit about the admissions, some of our program highlights, which are a lot and some tips and tricks for a, a successful application. Then Lizelle will take over and tell you a little bit about our um, MBA journey. So what it is actually like to be um, a, an MBA student at CBS, what you should look out for, what can you expect, what can you not expect may, maybe. Mm -hmm. And then we share um, some, let's say life hacks on the Danish job market because it's, uh, a small market but rather specific and attractive i would definitely say and we are also happy to answer all the questions so please just type it in the chat federica will make sure that every question will be answered so let's start with the copenhagen mba at a glance i'm not gonna go through all the rankings and all the numbers um basically my message of this slide is or of the left hand side of the slide is we are a small business school and we're doing fairly well in international and European rankings. So um, we can actually hold up to the big guys, I would say, um, and appear in all the big, the big rankings, like I just said. Um, if, you, if you ask me what is characteristic or what is special for the Copenhagen, Copenhagen MBA, I would firstly say the small class size. So we have every year about 40, or zero students. In our class, it was actually 36. And it's a one year full-time MBA. So it's a quite intense 11 month project program. Um, and we have over 90% international students. So our class was again, 100% international. Um, but overall looking at the past years also, and also the one that we are recruiting now, we are over 90% international. Like I said, the Danish job market is specific, but it is very attractive. So um, most of the jobs are in English. Danish as a language is nice to have, and they are happy to see that you actually make an effort and you, you learn the language. But for, let's say, 90% of the job, it's, it's not a requirement as such. Um, we are also very proud to have over 40% female students in our class. And Denmark is not only famous for healthy work-life balance, but it actually also lives up to this. Um, so what to know about the admission, actually? Um, as you might know, we have three admissions criteria, which is from an academic side, a bachelor's degree. We don't very much look into, it doesn't have, in what kind of degree in terms of is it business related or is it medicine or is it finance? It, it basically doesn't matter, so to say. Um, but we look at your professional experience. So we require at least three years of full-time work experience post 
graduation. Plus, we also have a GMAT score or a GMAT required, which should be at least 600. The average in our classes are 650 or is 650. Um, what the actual candidate profile looks like or the class, the student's profile is um, six years or more than work experience, more than six years of work experience, so not only three. We have an average age of 32. And like I said, we don't so much look into, into the background, um, meaning that we put a lot, a strong focus on creating a diverse class. And this goes for the background. So literally everything, but also international. So also nationality wise. And of course, financing is a big part of an MBA. So we have um, 330,000 Danish krona, which is about 44,000 euros as a tuition fee. We have um, limited scholarships available since we're a public institution. And I would say on average, the scholarship can take up 20% or takes up 20%. It can in certain um, cases also take up to 40, 45% um, percent of the tuition fee. Uh, what I would like to mention here, although it's not on the slide, but since I know that there are also people from Brazil joining, uh, we offer a special scholarship for Brazilian students, which is different from the ones that I just mentioned. Um, and it's a privately donated uh, scholarship for exclusively Brazilian students. So if you have more questions about this, I'm happy to answer either later or you just drop me an email. I'm going to share my contact details later. Um, Last thing about the about the applications is uh, the deadlines. So it's not for the 2021 intake. We still recruit, and so we still accept applications until the 10th of June for non-European citizens. That's mainly because of the visa um, processes that we need to we need to respect. And for European citizens, it's July 10th. And if you already think about the 2022 intake, then you can start your application and submit it from October this year onwards. Um, talking about the applications, I'm also not going to go through this list uh, specifically, but I, what I just would like to mention is, apart from the criteria that I already talked about, is make your application personal. There are essays required, and we would like to get to know the person behind the application. So wherever you can bring in your personal um, experience, your personal perspective, please do so. And also for the interview. So it's very important for us since we are such a small class um, and put a lot of focus on personal um, interaction, not only from from an admin side to the student side, but also within this within the class, it's very important that it's not only a professional fit, but also a personal fit. Apart from that, of course, we look at your career path, at your GMAT score, of course, but also on the or at your research that you did about the Danish job markets. What companies, what roles would you would you think are attractive? Um, now, and then I'm already almost at the end of, of my part, uh, a few program highlights from, from the curriculum side. So first of all, we have concentrations where you can basically deep dive into one um, of these four, four topics. So you can choose between digitalization, finance, entrepreneurship, and governance and sustainability. Interesting is that we also run an executive MBA program. And in these concentrations, you're mixed together with the executive MBA um, students, which is an additional networking experience, I would say. Um, another highlight is the integrated strategy project. That is basically the final master thesis where you put the skills that you have gained throughout the year into practice and apply it on a real life strategic problem statement. And you work together with a company, a real company, mostly in, in Denmark or Scandinavia or Northern Germany. Um, and in the end, deliver recommendations based on this, on this problem statement. 
And since this year we have two approaches to this, so you can choose either to work individually as an internship or you work as a team and you're assigned a company and three other classmates as, as your team. And this is, the, this is the last highlight that I wanna mention, not the last, but one of the, I mean, the most fun, um, the leadership discovery process. This is a very, I would say, unconventional MBA course that is conducted by an external consultancy. And it's, it puts leadership development out of the classroom and really into practice. And it basically, helps and supports and challenges you on developing your leadership skills. And um, on, it, is, it, is also, it is also combined with a mentoring program. So you have basically from every direction you can, you can reflect and challenge and develop your, your, leadership, your leadership skills, I would say. Um, it's very, intense and it's very it goes very very personal partly but it also is and we can say this the most the most fun course i have to say um yes but this was this was it from my part i now hand over to lizelle and happy to jump in later again and you can also jump in when i talk I will. Uh, it, it's actually funny our roles have now changed a little bit and in the mba i was business and magda was pleasure <laughs> And now with this presentation, I get the pleasure part. So it's a pleasure to explain to you, or at least enlighten you a little bit about the journey. Um, so in this photo here, you can see it actually does end in having a degree. So if remember this, if you, if you start your MBA anywhere in the world and um, you, you feel somewhere, halfway or midway, you're going to feel, oh my goodness, please remember that I told you today, it really does end into something. Okay, so oh, let me do it on there. So first of all, who am I? Just so that you know, you know, if 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 you can relate and agree to my values, otherwise you might not not agree to what I say. But um, as I mentioned earlier, I come from South Africa, and so my heart lies quite quite dear and close to one of our very famous presidents we had, Nelson Mandela, and and he said that as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. And um, this is what I what I would at least like to be in, in wherever I go and, and, and whatever I do. So this is kind of my motto, what drives me. I'm a family woman. I have two beautiful girls and I have a very handsome husband who should never know this. I enjoy doing sports and I am very much in love with Africa and all it has to offer. So that's just a little bit about me. In terms of your journey, I think what is, what is quite important is beforehand to and maybe this is the business part of my of my chat but to beforehand to really understand what are your goals so why are you doing this first of all that's one thing um, and and by now if you're already joining this webinar then you know why you are doing this but then in doing it you need to set yourself some goals because if you do not it's very easy that this can pivot into something that in the end does not give you what you set out to be. And um, as Magda, Magda mentioned earlier, this is an expensive program, or at least for me it was. So it, you want to at least get from it what you really, what you really intended. And, and the best way that I can give you advice on, on how these goals should look like is with these three things. So first of all, really make it personal. May, have a personal goal. Um, mine, as an example, my goal was to become less of what I am not. So this is a personal goal, right? Um, especially linked to the leadership development program, which Magda spoke about. It, you can really delve into this. So this is one of those programs that is not only business. It really is about personal development and leadership development. So make it personal, find something that you really wanna change or enhance or reduce or whatever about yourself and, and get it into your goals. Um, the second one that I want to speak about is make it a stretch target. Um, so what I mean with this, those of you in, in business or in sales might know that you can set a target, which everybody knows is achievable. And it's great. And we achieve the target and everybody is, is warm and fuzzy. But then you can also um, set a target that is actually a little bit stretched. So almost, almost out of your reach. And 
my advice for, for this year specifically would be to set targets in a way that it's almost out of your reach because it's the one year where you can really spend all your time and all your energy just on becoming you and becoming what you want to be and what you want to get from this um, uh, from this course. And then as much as, as you make it personal and as much as you make it, you know, hard to get there in a way, be open to adjust and pivot along the way. And um, I found this out actually a little bit, I don't want to say later, but it would have been nice if, if somebody told me this beforehand. You have your goals and you have your plans and yes, it is a lot of money and you want to get out something specific, but also be open to adjust it because you might not see and imagine it now, but specifically also with this, the entire way that the MBA in Copenhagen is structured with this personal development touch on the side, it, it really can change. And if you then allow yourself to change the outcome that, that it might be, I think you can really open up um, new worlds for yourself in terms of personal development, but also in terms of business development. So to recap this slide, have goals, have concrete goals, have clear goals, have difficult goals to achieve. And then as you go along, be, be agile enough to change it a little bit along the way. Okay, um, this, you can jump in here specifically, whether, I will. whether these challenges are, are, you know, as it should be. But when you do the MBA, so, so the previous slide was a little bit about how to go into it. Now you're into it. And it is a tough year and it is a long year, and it is an extremely short year, and it is a fun year, and it is a frustrating year, and it's a confusing year, and it's an enlightening year. And I promise you, it is all of these contradictions, depending on where you are in the journey. Um, so to give you a little bit of a head up on the type of challenges that you can um, at least prepare a little bit for, um, first of all, the pressure is high. And there is pressure and and it doesn't matter whether you are very much academically oriented or whether you are social oriented or whether you care a lot about grades or don't care a lot about grades the pressure is high um it, it really it the pressure is high i think specifically because of time constraints so there are many times time constraints and it's also so much information at the same time so yeah especially in the beginning you have multiple subjects at the same time. So you really have to focus um, between different um, uh, courses and, and um, types of knowledge that you gain. So you might have a finance class or a statistics class at the same time that you have a philosophy type subject more. So how do you, how do you jump between these? And, and this ups the pressure for sure. So know that it's coming. And what I can give you in terms of advice is find ways now that you know little rituals or whatever it is that work for you how you can manage your pressure. Um, some people will go and run, for example, some people will read a book, whatever it is, just find something before you start so that you know when you get there, how you can alleviate it and make it a little bit easier. Alongside this, a little bit is managing your motivation. So uh, I opened the slide with saying that it's all these contradicting feelings, right? And because you experience feelings, it is tiring um, because it's emotional. So for me, it really was important to manage my motivation to make sure that I am still excited to go. And this for me meant to sometimes just stop and say, okay, I still have a day and a half or another six hours left before a submission deadline, but this is now good enough. This is what it is. And I'm going to spend time with my two little girls and just feel revived. So find things. This is different for me than managing pressure. This is managing motivation. So how do you keep yourself in a happy place? to find this. I think, sorry, there it falls actually into place what kind of targets or um, goals you set yourself and and do the research. It helps a lot to, if you think about your professional, the professional perspective, for example, how can you, or how do you plan to leverage the MBA afterwards? So you can avoid a lot of um, frustration or a lot of overwhelming by doing research beforehand and know what to focus on. It, it goes into the pressure part. It also goes into the motivation part because if you wanna go in finance, then you might not care so much about HR. 
it's still mm -hmm. valid what there is what they teach you and it, the case discussions and the guest speakers are actually the, one of the best in this HR course but um, the outcome itself or let's say the grades should not matter for you specifically so I think this this goes actually yes. well together yes exactly but know beforehand what is it that puts you on the pressure how do you manage it what is it that motivates you and how do you remind yourself when you are not feeling motivated what it is that you should be doing um, the third topic is a little bit subject matter. And, and with this, I personally had a little bit of difficulty in the beginning um, because my background is finance. So I, I studied accounting and I did a SEMA as well. And I did quite a few additional accounting type or finance type certificates. So some of the subjects, this is an MBA, right? So it, it covers HR, it covers finance, it covers organizational um, matters, sustainability. It covers many um, different subjects. And it's a little bit... It's higher than a general level, for sure. You, you definitely get the language in the different subjects, but it's not, none of the subjects will make you a specialist in the subject. So for me on the, on the finance subjects, for example, I was thinking, okay, well, I know this. So I'm paying a lot of money. Why do I get this? Um, or what do I get from this? And then until one day I decided to listen to what the people who are not getting the finance is asking and what the conversation is about. And then, yes, I know how to do finance. But after my MBA, I also know and understand what other people don't understand or find complicated or difficult. Um, or what is, how, how is finance contradicted on the sales side, for example? So it's a little bit about rearranging your mind to, to understand, and it's actually what Magda said earlier, from this subject, what do I want? And from the next subject, what do I want? And, and your motivation in each subject should be different. You don't want to become a specialist in HR finance. Yes. It, then it doesn't make sense. Um, so before you start a subject, read through what they give you in terms of what this will be about and what, what topics will be covered and so on, because they make everything available beforehand. And decide for yourself, what is it that I want to, what at the end of this, what would make me say, yes, tick, I got from this what I paid for. Um, a little bit also change in perspective. So this might be challenging for, for some people is to really, um, especially I think if you come from a very specialized field, how do you change your perspective? How do you sit in class and really try not to only bring your own point across, but use this here with very clever and very educated and extremely intelligent people in one class to really listen to different perspectives. And you will you really be surprised how many times your perspective can be changed. Um, my perspective was massively changed around leadership, um, for example. So use this, it's challenging. So this is why I put it on this slide. It is challenging to, to tell yourself to do this, but really try and um, I think they told us, what was it? Why yeah, there, was there was this acronym that talking, they gave us, yeah. but it comes down to, um, I used to try and, and ask myself at least once a week sometime, remember, why am I talking? Or what do I have to say? Is it because I'm bringing, am I learning anything from the fact that I'm now talking? Or can I get something from somebody else that is talking? So also a challenge that, that some might experience. This is also where the diversity comes in handy because you will never be in a safe environment, so to say, where you can speak freely and get a completely different response than you would normally expect. Mm -hmm. If I talk to, I'm from Austria and I worked all my life in Austria before coming to Copenhagen. So all the people I worked with were, were Austrians basically. So somehow, you know, you, you know how your people think some, somehow. If you raise your voice in class and then you have a girl from Malaysia who is so, completely different setup in her mind it 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 really can change your perspective on 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 a lot of things so yeah this to me personally i think this is actually where you get the most let's say bang for your buck in a sense mm. right this is what you pay for a lot of the subject matter you can if you want to take the time and read up on these things and self-study you could but you cannot you cannot do this by yourself, get other perspectives in. And specifically because Copenhagen is such an international class, it, it really gives you the ability to, to understand and, and know people better. Um, and I don't mean only 
speaking up. So I'm not only talking to the extroverts now, I'm also talking to the introverts. So just because you are quiet doesn't mean that you are not considering what somebody else is doing. Uh, one of our um, lecturers actually challenged me and told me when we had a discussion to, for at least a week, whatever we are talking about in class, take the opposite point of mm -hmm. what you really think or feel and really argue it, really try and argue it. So even you don't believe in it, argue it and see what, what kind of arguments come back at you and then assess, is this the arguments I would have had or is there something that I actually didn't think about? So really challenge yourself here. Balancing family life is of course also important. Um, I think it is very doable to do an MBA with a family. Um, it is if you're gonna relocate a family. So we relocated with two, two small girls and, and my husband, he actually came without a job at the time. Um, but it is really a city where this is extremely doable. Um, the government supports you in so many ways. If for example, you have to do it similar than us without a salary in the beginning and just from savings, the government has many grants in regards to schooling, for example, and so on. So the kids will be sorted. There's no kid that lives in Copenhagen that does not have um, proper education and um, you know care. enough healthcare and grants and things to, to help with this. So this is very, very doable. In terms of the MBA, I, I sometimes think that they made it easier for me because I had to at some point say, okay, now it's done. My paper is written because I have to put the kids in bed. Where I think if you come by yourself, maybe this is more the challenge for, for the guys without a family. You have to also tell yourself this is now good enough and it's done because you can. We had people in our class who literally finished papers and restart papers at 10 o'clock at night to submit it before two or three in the morning. Don't do that to yourself. It can also be good enough. And then the last one is allowing yourself the space to become. And I don't say anything after become because I don't know what it is that you need to become or if it's becoming more of something or less of something or something different or um, whatever it is, give yourself this space. So don't get so wrapped up in the everyday and the class and the grades and the, and the next, you know, discussion in class, don't get so wrapped up in it that you forget that you are actually paying a lot of money for one full year to just think about and be yourself and develop yourself. Even when you are married or you have children or whatever, take this year for you and, and agree with your, with your loved ones, whoever is coming with you, agree with them, even the ones at home, tell them, this is my year. So do not be upset with me if I don't give you time. These are my rules. Give me this one year. I promise I'll make it up. So this kind of you can do ahead of time. Mm, definitely, for sure. Let's go on. Yes. I'm speaking much more. I'm oh, but I like it. You say well, it thinks. So. Okay, good. <laughs> so, so those were the challenges, and then no, uh, the main reflections. Actually, if, if we had to pick six, or if I had to pick six pictures to kind of explain this. Um, it's actually more uh, comes together with the saying from Dalai Lama where he says that the goal is not to be better than the other man but to be better than your previous self and it speaks a little bit to my last point on the previous slide is give yourself space to become know where it is you want to go in terms of your goals that you said why you want to go there be a little bit agile on the way make sure you you make provision for the things you can manage like your stress and your whatever and then be and allow and enjoy um the first one is <laughs> do you think they will believe us i mean i hope so because but nobody was... does until it's done yeah exactly that's the thing grades so. don't matter i promise you they don't the Danes even have a weird way of grading you get a grade from two to twelve if you get a four you pass if you have a seven you're good if you have a 10, you're amazing. And if you get a 12, you walk on water. More. I mean, it, it is, nobody can really not do well if you put in the time and effort to develop yourself. That's, that should be your grade. If after a subject, you feel like you've developed a little bit yourself, you are better than your previous self in this subject, then you have done enough. Um, but you will not believe us. And then next year, just before graduation, you tell us, us that... You know, you were right. We should have had much less stress. You can manage this previous pressure. You can manage a lot by just Girls listening well. to me now. Yes. Anyway, the thing that does matter is friendship. So grades don't matter. Friendship does. And there's really scope for so 
much you, you get to know each other on an argumentative level on I mean in terms of uh, debating not like fighting but debating things you, you learn how people think you share hard times you share good times you share hopefully many beers too many some nights um, but the friendships that you can get from this is amazing so spend time on it um, you are part of something so this is also profound it's, it's almost like a um, and in the old days, but it, they have these boys clubs or mm. that do things together and be naughty together. You are a little bit part of something like this. Um, of course, the days in the classes become long. So sometimes you sit in class and secretly watch tennis, whatever. And it, it's just being part of something, right? So don't take this for granted. Put in effort. Um, things like the VCIC, which is a venture capital um, inter investment competition. competition. Yes. Yes. Um, take part in these things the picture that you see here is where i think it is i don't know 11 o'clock at night we had to present the next day um which of the companies we would invest money in we were so tired and then you know you open another beer and you laugh and you have fun so do these things because they really are, are a great way of of learning first of all but also making friends you get what you give um very true, probably the most true of it all. Yeah. If you're gonna if you're gonna study the theory, you will have a degree with a high grade and you know theory. If you're gonna really engage in the dialogues only, you won't know the theory, but you will get dialogues from this. If you if you give your time, you'll get friends back. If you don't, you won't. So you decide what is it that you want to give. What falls in here and for the ones who of you who will apply and who will who will make it and who get to enjoy the leadership discovery process that I mentioned. So Thomas, the one who is who is leading the, the course and who is responsible for the for the whole LDP, he always says, mm. lean in. And this is exactly what it is. So the more you lean in, um, the harder it might be to lean out again, but it is definitely something that you that you, where you where you get something something back. And you cannot expect to get a lot if you don't give a lot. So um, remember, remember also, or what what we could give you as a as a little tip is lean in. Not only in the it, this would LDP. not be it would not be an MBA presentation yes, if you did if not say this. So yeah, <laughs> um, okay, do it for you. So we spoke about this a lot already, but make your year. It's for you. Make sure your husband, boyfriend, mother, kids, everybody kind of understands, and and do what you need to do to make yourself better. Um, and you will not know this beforehand. So be able to pivot a little bit along the way. What is it that I need now? And then best and, and most important is have fun. It, it really is a, a great year. I mean, we would not be sitting here at six o'clock at night doing a webinar if we didn't believe in this. Um, first of all, in the course, in the school, in the people. Um, Denmark is a great city to live in. It's a great place to experience for one year or for, you know, longer, More. however you choose. Yeah. Which, if you want to do it longer, Magda has some good. I mean, we thought life hacks. we thought of some some of you know some specifics as I mentioned before um, when it comes to to looking for a job. So these are only four very brief points, and we can elaborate on them as well. But um, we thought that this is the most the most specific. So first of all, it's. Networking is very important. Denmark is a is a small country. Copenhagen is not the biggest city. It's very international, but it's at one point everybody knows everybody basically, especially in certain in certain fields. So by selective networking, what we mean is don't run from networking event to networking event, and you always also will get business cards and you know just basically throw them in in the air and hope that somebody will will catch catch your card. It's more use the alumni network because also of all the reasons that Liz Elters or we just tried to, to explain to you, most of our alumni also are still in Copenhagen. So this is a very useful tool um, to, to reach out to and to um, get an idea of is this job actually or I don't I know somebody in this company. So who can I connect to and think when you network, it doesn't make sense in Denmark to have a broad network of people you know a little bit, but not really. 
Um, the second one is, I also mentioned it already in the, in the application part is research of companies and potential roles. So Denmark is a, Copenhagen, let's say, um, is, a, is, is an attractive market. There are a lot of big companies. There are a lot of upcoming small companies. There are tech companies. There are rather conventional companies. So really do your research and have a focus. So it's, it's, it's very hard that you um, get this enlightening moment during the MBA and realize, oh, I know exactly what I want to do. This is probably not going to happen. It helps you to understand where you want to go or it opens your eyes, especially if, you're, if you take our recommendations and our suggestions um, seriously. It helps you on the way, but you still need to do research and you still need to understand what kind of role do you want to do you want to get or do you want to take second uh, third it's all also what we, we we just have two little kids that we also need to take care of um we also we also would recommend you to be open-minded and actually go out there so it goes a little bit together with the selective networking but what we meant by this is um a lot of roles are very broadly defined and they actually give you um, a lot of space to basically develop and define your own role. So be open not only during the MBA, but also um, in the job hunt and then in the in the actual job. So if you have, I don't know, it depends of course in the on the company and on the on the role that you that you have, but what we all and if if we talk to our classmates they all say they have never experienced such freedom and pure trust in what you do so just be out there and work with the trust that the danish um, people give you because it is a very trust-based um culture and the the responsibility actually is in not disappointing them which is a which is I think a nice a nice incentive um, and by one step back can be two steps forwards we thought um, like Liselle also said already relocating is a big challenge and it can often mean that you career-wise need to take a step sideways, meaning you go to a similar role that you did to the same role or to a similar or same industry um, or you can even move within a company that you already work for so also be open-minded in this regard and like I just said a lot of roles allow you to progress quite quickly so don't um, or not don't but what we saw and talking to our our classmates and being in the Danish job market it really it might sound different than it is so it's it's not necessarily a bad thing to to take a similar role as before so this is this is basically what 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 we thought about um, the four, yeah, big life hacks. There are a lot of small ones as well. Do you have anything? Yes, to but add? no. This is just this is the same, and and I just want to reiterate the last one. It's it was funny, especially coming from from South Africa, where I, I think we are quite a competitive um, country. Um, for me, it was like okay, but now I did an MBA, so you know I should. And, and it's amazing how you perceive something as a step back and, and within this Danish culture, if the jobs are so open, yeah, you can literally make of it what you want. So just, just find that first job in a Danish company and then I promise you, you'll be fine. So don't let it, don't let this make you go back home if you really wanted to stay here. Yeah, that, it, that's actually the point. It also actually goes well. I mean, it's a little bit reflective now, but it's also, they speak about the flat hierarchies in, in Scandinavia and it is actually true it is not not true in terms of there is no CEO and everybody is CEO of course there are rules uh, regulations and you know certain structures in in place but what flat hierarchy means is basically everybody is approachable no matter if it's a small startup or it's if it's a big company like mask or Novo Nordisk you always have this um line this open open channel to the highest people in the company and it's the same at cbs you can easily connect to all the lecturers all the guest speakers everywhere but it's also true in the job market and this is also why 
um, one step back can can mean two steps forward because once they see your potential, they really um, want to encourage you and support you. So so much so much to to this one. So now I think we're good for questions. I'm just gonna share my my screen uh, my my contact details for everybody who who hasn't um, been in contact with me yet. So um, maybe you guys can take a screenshot. And yes, I think then we are good for questions. Sounds great. So thank you so much, Lizelle and Magdalena, for your presentation. And actually, while you were uh, presenting, we received lots of questions, which is great. So we will do our best to go through them all and keep writing them into the Q and A. Um, so starting from one of the first questions that we receive. So they say, um, I understand that a lot of management and strategy consulting jobs require you to crack case interviews. And does the MBA at Copenhagen Business School as a, like, a, a career team that guide you and prepare you accordingly? So for someone that maybe never experienced a case interview, whenever I like an approach hands-on in terms of education, what is, what can an MBA give you in this sense? Um, maybe I say, and then if you wanna. Um, yes, so the CBS MBA um, has a career service, of course, and they do all the general preparations. So they do mock interviews and salary negotiations, and they help you literally from who could you reach out to, to now you got the interview and how, how should we tackle this? Especially when it comes to consulting and to, to, to case studies, um, there is also the career suite where it's only about jobs and they bring in companies um, to basically uh, tell you about their hiring um, processes about their hiring um, interviews, so to say. And I actually talked to one of my colleagues and they have, for this year, they have um, BCG, so Boston Consulting Group in there, and they actually discuss exactly this. I cannot promise you that it's going to be the same next year, but the support is there in every, in every regard, yeah. Okay, I can take the next. Do you want to read it first? Uh, yeah, of course, absolutely. So next question is about, um, so Ria has a total of 3.5 years in financial consulting and she wanted to pivot into management strategy consulting post MBA. So is the Denmark market accepting the transition? Uh, does it welcome entry level jobs in this domain or are you looking for someone with a bit more work experience? Yes, so I can take this one. I can actually take the next one. With Absolutely. You, you ask about the best platform to network and, and what initiatives they're taking. So let's do the first one. Um, and the, the first one, yes, 100%. So there's definitely a market specifically for consulting. And I think there are many consulting jobs available. To be 100% honest, junior consulting jobs, like you say, more junior, you know, three and a half years, four years consulting. I think it's actually easier mm -hmm. than if you already had a lot of experience. Um, this is difficult because, because they're such a close community. They have this kind of level of succession already in, intact. So um, this would be great. The fact that you have done M&A advisory, I think, sets you up great for management strategy consulting. So 100%, I think, um, to link this to the next question is actually you can, from the start, make sure that you are in, in contact with the right people. Um, the best platform to network is LinkedIn. LinkedIn is like, I don't know, Denmark's Facebook or something. Everything happens there. Um, and also the careers team really make an effort on fairs and, and connecting you um, with alumni and so on. But also, I don't know if they still do it, but you have your own career kind of council. Mentor. And then you kind of say, okay, this is what I want. And they set you up with a mentor in the industry um, and, and also who you can reach out to to do coffee dates. So if you're really interested in that, uh, make sure that you speak from the start with the right people, but they will provide it for you. No worries about that. Thank you. Jumping on a question that we received later on, uh, they're asking us how many girls are on average into an MBA class or is it mainly a men-oriented environment? I know you mentioned work-life balance, you mentioned families. So uh, what could be your feedback about this? Maybe for a woman who's looking to enroll into an MBA might have some doubts. 
Yeah, no, I think I mentioned it on, on right at the beginning and maybe you, you were not there yet, but um, the CBS MBA is proud to have 40% women. And it was in our class, it is in the current class. Um, I cannot tell you yet how it's gonna be in the, in the upcoming class because we are still taking applications. But first of all, yes, women are also in the MBA to a big part. Plus Denmark is also um, in terms of family work-life balance, but it is a very, a country that, that strives for equality, I would say. So um, yeah, definitely. So it, there, shouldn't, there shouldn't be any concerns there. Um, asking about, um, I'm interested in finance, but I'm not sure if I should enroll into an MBA or into a master of science in finance. What would you suggest? My goal is to work for a consultancy firm in Europe. Such a, uh, such a hard question. Um, if you want to work as a, in a consultancy firm as a finance specialist, then rather do a master's in finance would be my uh, suggestion because like I said earlier, it is more general. It is high. It is a high level of general. So you will know at least what what bachelor we have honors as well. So you will know what bachelor um, and honors degree students know about finance. You will know a lot, but it will not be on master's level in finance specifically. So define what you want to do with it. If you want to consult mergers and acquisitions, maybe do a master's in finance. If you want to consult on financial strategy, then an MBA should be more clear. Thank you. Um, questions about if a uh, project management certification uh, with an MBA adds value in project management roles in Denmark, if it's necessary to take also these uh, PMP certification. I mean, it's hard to, I, I, I'm not sure if we can answer this, this correctly or without any, without any potential changes. I would say, like I said, the roles are quite open. So certificates, of course, help um, to show your experience. However, for Danish companies, it's very important that it's also a personal fit. Their interviews take weeks or the hiring process takes weeks. There are always personality tests involved. There are also ability tests involved, but they have a special, most of the companies schedule special sessions with the HR to discuss your, the outcome of your personality questionnaire. It's not a test in that sense. So if you have the certificate already, great. Um, if you wanna do it, I mean, there is never, I would never say no to more education, but I can also not guarantee you that a certificate will help you to get a project management role compared to another one who just clicks better with the, with the hiring manager. So it is, a, it is a thin line. If you have it already, it's definitely something that, that you should show and, and also um, leverage, definitely. Thank you. There was a question about working part-time uh, in the student's own company in Copenhagen and at the same time complete the MBA over one and a half years. I don't know if you have many, maybe some example or some of your colleagues who actually work in a study at the same time. So, so you can actually um, not do it over one and a half years. The MBA full-time is full-time one year. What you can do is you can work a maximum of 20 hours a week mm, when you are here. Visa. I would not advise it because I think you will really struggle. I don't think you can only do 20 hours a week MBA and still get from it what, what you can. What you could consider in this case is the executive MBA. So the executive MBA is part-time while you work. Yeah. It's, it's, it has slightly different requirements, but it's part-time and it goes over, over two years. Thank you. Um, Randy is connecting from Indonesia. It's actually midnight almost there. So uh, thank you for being connected. He's um, asking what are the most common mistakes when applying for this MBA? I mean, <laughs> like I said, it's, we look, we, we basically, we're in this position where we handpick every application. So we read all the essays, we read the references. Um, we really evaluate um, from, from a 360 degree perspective, basically every application. If, it's, if you submit an application with the minimum amount of work where you, for example, there are three essays and one of them is optional. It is optional, yes, because you can submit the application also without filling in this, this essay, but it is actually the most important one. So um, 
show if you if you make it like one out of 500 applications we will spot this and it will not very much be appreciated so we really want to make sure that you know the program you know what you're getting yourself into you know that you're going to denmark you know that we speak danish here or or the Danes speak danish um not doing research and trying to um get into a big size program this is not not working because we are personal everybody knows everybody and there is basically no way to to escape from each other in a good way of course so um be personal and and also show us that you that you're committed thank you um speaking about most common mistakes um there is a similar question asking about how to strengthen the profile so what would you suggest what sort of preparation would you suggest um, to do before joining the program to strengthen the profile and in more specifically someone who's coming from science background is asking if there is any sort of particular preparation that this person should do so when it comes to maybe i can take this from the enrollment perspective and then you yes. from the personal um from the enrollment or let's say academic perspective um we have a pre-mba course that is also that is for everybody who is enrolled and admitted one week before the actual start of the mba and there they go through um account or some financial courses i didn't take it although i was okay. i'm not the best finance person but i know that people have taken it um and it's about finance it's about organizational structures and it's a one week pre course so this kind of sets you up or brings you up to speed when you have have some doubts um if you already want to study in a way i don't i don't think that this this makes sense because um every year the program changes a little bit and it wouldn't make sense for me now to send you the book list uh, uh first of all you can get the books cheaper from the current students and second uh it's it's it might change so uh, i would rather focus my preparation on denmark get settled find an apartment or a room where you don't have to move within the year um and try to get all the bureaucratic stuff and the the admin stuff that actually is quite overwhelming. Get this in place, and the studying will come at at one point. Perfect. Thank you. Um, asking about um, so we you mentioned during the presentation that there are different concentrations that students can choose from. The asking if actually the MBA length, which we remember is a year, can be extended to one and a half year if you take two concentrations. No. no, it's it's 11 months. That's it. You start on 4th of October 4th and you graduate, I don't know, September 15th. If you can only um, sign up for one concentration, meaning you have to you go through the exams and you get a grade, you can potentially, if they don't overlap, audit another one. That's possible, but it's not possible to go longer than these 11 months. Thank you. Uh, speaking about um, application, like requirements for application, somebody says, I currently have two years full time work experience. It will be three years by September 2022. Can I still apply for the full 2022 intake? Yes, of course. I mean, if then there are three years of work experience, and if you apply, or you mean for September, so you would start in september 20 or in i think so i think so yeah there was the yes, question upwards. i mean like i said the average years of work experience is six to seven post graduation but it's an average so you would rather be on the on the less experienced side but sure um, during the presentation, you actually mentioned that for Brazilian students, you have a specialist scholarship in place. So they were asking us if you can share a little bit more details about this, as I believe we have few Brazilians connected. Yes, of course, I'm happy to. So the, the, the scholarship is called the Waldemar Schmidt Scholarship. And um, Waldemar Schmidt is, is a, a Danish businessman, I would say, who has very tight connections to Brazil. He worked for 10 years in Brazil and obviously also lived there. And he has um, the mission basically, or the vision to 
help Brazilian um, students who are in need of, of a scholarship to, to bridge to Denmark and basically make, make not make the jump, but rather um, focus on a knowledge exchange. So the procedure would be um, a normal application as, as everybody else. And of course it will come up because I will see that, that you are Brazilian and what, what would will be required once you get admitted or during the admissions process, we will also set up an, a separate interview with Valdemar Schmidt so that he can actually be convinced of um, your profile, of your personality, and he actually knows where his money goes to. So he's also the one deciding how high the scholarship will, will be for you if, you if you are Brazilian. But he is very generous and very, um, open and, and very eager to, to support Brazilians um, coming to, to Denmark. So even if you consider applying for this year, and I said for non-Europeans, it's, it's, it's June 10th, um, we can be a little bit flexible with the deadlines and it would still be, still be possible. So, yeah. Thank you. During the presentation, we mentioned about um, job outcome within Denmark after the MBA. Someone is asking us uh, about international outlook uh, with respect to employment beyond Denmark. So thinking about the US or other European countries, if you have some sort of data that you can share with us. Do you want to take it? I don't have data to, sh to share with you, but I think this is very much dependent on the industry that you're looking at. So I, I don't think I can tell you, yes, there are many opportunities or no, there is not. Um, I think if you understand your industry and you know what industry you want to be in, um, it is possible to make sure that you join, let's say after the MBA, an international company in Denmark, of which there are many. So the Danish companies is, is very international and then pivot or, or move then from there to, to a, another posting in another country. Um, to go directly from here to an international, um, I, I would be ill-equipped to tell you. I can just tell you from work, having worked in multinational companies, usually the easiest way to do this is, is with a company in some way. Also, maybe in addition to this, uh, and I know this from doing my own research about the MBAs, basically every MBA has a career service in some some sort of career service so and every MBA is of course focused on the job market where the MBA is happening so for us the career service can also do much more in Copenhagen than if you ask them I would like to work in Manila can you please tell me who I should talk to so it's 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 a decision that that you also, or a, a, an aspect that I would, I would recommend you to also factor in into your decisions. So where, where would you actually like to apply for jobs and where can you see yourself working? Thank you. Um, question, um, we received a few questions about, uh, of course, the current situation. So with the COVID, if you have any news about if the classes are actually held in person or online? And in general, they're asking us if these MBA can actually be taken online or remotely. Um, so we were in this unlucky um, space that we were switched to online and it's of course not the same, <laughs> I would say. Uh, right now it looks very, very well in Denmark. So the students are on campus, full, fully on campus, together in one class. Um, everything, of course, under under safety and and health um, measurements, or how do you call? So that you need to take a test before you enter the building, and and people are very responsible in this regard in Denmark as well. So um, also Denmark is doing very well with the vaccines, and by the start of the MBA this year it is planned that everybody will be vaccinated in Denmark. So we are very, very positive that uh, the MBA will be face-to-face. -face. And if it is so, it is not an online MBA. So we require the students to be here and be in class. Um, of course, as we all have learned in the last year, we can never say never. So if uh, a new, mutation comes up and is you know basically 
bring the whole MBA, then yes, of course, we need to switch to online. But if things stay like this, we are very good and very proud to, to not be online. It is such a great news. We really hope to go back to normal very soon. Uh -huh. um, we they asking us, so do you really think an MBA can help career switcher? So someone that is looking to start an MBA to a change of career. I'll take this. Mm -hmm. I think I think um, I, think <laughs> I, I sigh because everybody wants this, right? This is what many times when you do an MBA, it's because you're at a, at a place in mm -hmm. a roadblock or a burning platform in your career and you think, okay, let's do this thing. So yes, the short answer is yes, it really can help career switches. If you really know what you want and you really want to know where you want to go and, and what it is that you need. So what I mean with this is if you want a career switch, you've been in finance and you're very clear you want to switch to another industry or you want to switch to commercial then yes, then you focus a lot on the commercial subjects. You, you, you make sure that you kind of build competences and build your CV around how, how the MBA has helped you to become more commercially driven. And then of course you can make the switch. Um, similar so in the industry. I mean, there was somebody once, it wasn't in our class, who was a pilot. Hmm. And he came and after the MBA, he became a risk manager at a bank. So it sounds like a great pivot, but in essence, he was still doing a lot of risk management as a pilot, right? You, you're the whole time busy assessing the risks and making sure you get people safe. So if the switch is at least, you can at least show a golden thread, then yes, it can. I think in many cases, it doesn't. And I think people are disappointed when it doesn't. Um, so, so set your hopes on the right things. Know what you want to do. Don't, don't think an MBA is going to solve your problem if you are um, frustrated with your work. No, an MBA won't help. solve this. It's not going to help. And also there is what, it, what we mentioned earlier, the one step back or one step to the side can mean two steps forward. So yes, you, you like Lizelle said, it can help and it, it, it gives you all the stuff that we talked about, new perspectives and challenges and everything. Um, but also remember that it's not, you will not become a CFO after just by doing the MBA, because um, there is so much more to the MBA as well as to the role. So um, just have this in mind also. Thank you. Uh, very interesting question. What a typical day look like for an MBA student? Given that it's a year, does it mean that routine is very active and jam-packed? <laughs> do you want to answer? <laughs> Maybe we do this together. Um, let's say it depends on <laughs> which stage in the MBA you are. Um, in the beginning, yes, it is, it is hectic and it is also um, a little bit overpacked, to be very honest. There comes in the pressure handling, the motivation handling, um, your prioritization. So yes, it is a very time constrained experience over the whole year. In terms of scheduling and, and days, it, it's like I said, different. In the beginning, in the first couple of months, it's, it's basically you have classes from nine until 4.30 every day. They schedule, of course, days off in between if there are exams and, and assignments and deliverables. Um, once it gets into springtime, there is less, less classroom presence, but rather more individual work with the concentrations and also the integrated strategy project that kicks off, which basically dictates the last months. And it, it sounds, I was actually very much looking forward to this part because I thought, you know, you're free and you can schedule it and everything, but you actually need to put together this paper. You need to work with the company. So it's, it is a full-time job for 11 months. It's, mm. it's, it's not like, of course, you're rather flexible, but in your own, if you prefer working at night, then of course you can do it and you can sleep during the day, especially in the summer, but which we would not recommend, I think. But um, it is well-structured um but there is a little bit of change it, it is it is busy um but to put it into perspective i like what you said it's a full-time job for a year it's a job where you do a lot of different things and learn new things every day 
I managed to drop off my two girls at school most days and I picked them up most days and we had dinner together most days and I was able to put them in bed and at least spend two or three hours with them playing. So it's a lot about how you structure and what it is that the goal that you want to put in. But during the, the day you arrive at 8.30, there's some breaks in between, there's long like break lunch and you have to work at least two, three hours after, after class as well. Thank you for your very much honest answer. Um, lots of questions are arriving. Um, I wanted to take the time to ask you a final question. So they, you mentioned about the network, this great opportunity an MBA can give you. They're asking us if you can tell us a little bit more about alumni. They're actually asking famous people graduating from MBA. I guess famous in a sense of maybe successful people. If you have any stories that you remember particularly uh, you would like to share with us? I mean, to be very honest, I cannot think of names. I know that we have the MB, our, our blog where we, where we post regularly um, the, the career paths of our alumni. And if you ask this question, please consider that, like I said, we are all people, most of us come from outside. So we are busy or the MBA is a way of starting your life over in a new city. So it's, it's, it all falls a little bit into, into place what we, what we said earlier. Um, the EMBA compared, so the executive MBA, they are more uh, experienced. They're mainly from Denmark since it's part-time. So they have they have maybe let's call it the famous the famous people. It's the the full time MBA is is um, a way to to shift, to relocate, and to gain and leverage new skills. That is what the what the full time MBA is about. I would say. I mean, yeah. also defining famous is so far, so broad, right? So famous how. Um, but what I can say is that from the MBA, people in Denmark currently. There are uh, many people with positions in the C-suite, if that's famous enough. <laughs> Thank you so much. I can see that we also received some more specific questions about, let's say, application requirements. And I wanted to ask everyone that we will be sharing with you a link to the registration for this webinar. And we will be also sending you um, an email with uh, some contact details and some useful information. So you can basically reach out to the team. And I can also see that Magdalena just put in her email address. So any specific question, I guess um, it would be great if you could reach out to the team so they will be able to help you in a timely manner and also be focusing on what could be your different background or your story that could vary from um, another one who's attending the webinar today. Um, I really wanted to thank Lizelle and Magdalena for, for being with us uh, tonight for the presentation and actually all of you for being connected because we answered to so many questions, all very much interesting questions and it's been very useful for me and I really hope it's been awful, useful for all of you who attended. So really thank you. Thank you Lizelle and Magdalena. Thank you for being connected. Thank you, thank you it also. Was fun. It was mm -hmm. fun, yeah, and we hope we hope it gave you a, a few insights. Yes, and we hope to see some of you soon. Yes, that would be good. Absolutely. And look out for an email because we will get in contact after the event. So in case you have any further questions that we can manage, let's say, to answer tonight, there will definitely be time to get in contact with the team. So thank you so much and have a great rest of your day then. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. -bye. Thanks, bye. bye.